Hello there and welcome to part two of this uh, just a mini series of videos that I've put together where I just talk about playing American Civil War epic battles. Um, if you haven't watched the first video, part one, I've put a link in the description to this video. But in very short summary, I'm basically just going through the uh, the supplement that you get from Warlord Games um, that sort of accompanies the uh, this um, the system and also playing American Civil War games. And these provide you a bit, a bit of the flavour for the period on top of the main black powder rules. So today's video, I'm going to be covering off um, cavalry and skirmishers. So I do hope you enjoy it. I've had some really nice comments back from the first video, so it feels like uh, this is probably uh, not been a waste of time, which is always nice. Uh, but as always, guys, leave some comments for me, see what you want, anything else you want me to talk about, um, or contact me directly, and that's absolutely fine. So I hope you enjoy this one, and catch you all soon for part three. Right, let's talk about cavalry. I think that the rules for cavalry are really interesting in, in this um, supplement. Um, certainly reflects the different nature of cavalry compared to different um, eras. Certainly, I mean, I play Napoleonics, and I'm used to the cavalry being quite a, firstly, quite a big part of your force, your army, maybe up to a third. You have your cuirassiers, your hussars, your lancers, and they're charging around the battlefield, clashing into everybody, big cavalry battles, smashing through the lines, etc., etc. Now, that didn't really happen in the American Civil War, although, the, although there were examples of cavalry clashes. But, the American, but there were more, the cavalry were more kind of your advanced force, um, a kind of mounted infantry, skirmishing at, at the front until the main forces arrived. And the rules reflect that. And I think it's really interesting. It adds a lot of flavour to the game. And also, I do think as well, it can be tactically quite useful. And I found them really, um, if you use them properly, they can really have quite a lot of flexibility to your army. Um, so I'll go through a few of the, the things that it covers in, in the rule book and then um, see what those differences are. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, the, about cavalry movement. So I've covered off movement in my first video, um, but I'm doing the same again. So they're normally 18-inch moves, so they become 9 because I halve my ranges. So that becomes a 9-inch move. Um, but the main thing for cavalry, they get a free dismount or mount at the start or end of their turn of movement. And that's really useful. And this, again, reflects the fact that they were more like mounted infantry. Um, and so you get that extra range for moving, you get that extra three inches of movement, but you're also allowed to then dismount for free, and that'll come in useful. Um, I've got, I'll, I'll talk about shooting in another video, but effectively in American Civil War rules, you can only move, you can only shoot if you've only moved once. Now, so that's a free move, so you can move up to here, you could dismount, and that class was one move, so you could still be able to shoot. So that's really useful. And again, you can mount at the start of your turn as well. So if you were dismounted, you can mount and dismount. Now you do need to paint different models. So you, do, you do need a dismounted version of your unit. Um, I've sometimes played where they're just this all game, where they're just basically, basically classed as skirmishers. But in that scenario there, they've, they've moved the nine inches, dismounted for free. And now you've got a skirmishing infantry unit. And you get a dual profile in the book. So um, when they're mounted, they get more hand-to-hand -hand dice. But when they're dismounted, they get more shooting dice. Um, so I think it's up to eight for being mounted and six for dismounted. They get one shooting dice when they're mounted and they get three when they're dismounted. So I think they're very, very useful because they still don't lose their firepower if you've got a full-size regiment like I've got here. Uh, and also being skirmishes, and I will come on to skirmishes in, in a moment, but basically they get quite a lot of advantages, I think, in black powder. They're very useful uh, units in, in uh, the game. Um, because they're skirmishers, they get to um, uh, basically get a they're hard to hit. Basically, they are not a clear target. So if these guys were shooting at these, they would get a minus penalty for being in skirmish mode. But they still get their three shooting dice as much as they do. So I think it's really useful. Um, I know some players tend to maybe weaken them, maybe get one less dice, but I just tend to keep it as it is. Uh, they are tend to be armed with carbines or carbines. They, uh, they're about a range of nine again. So they haven't got quite the range of a rifled musket. But if you've got that extra movement, you know, that was one move, dismount, and they're still within range to shoot at these guys here. So I think they're really useful to have. Um, and also, like I say, you can you can evade. So if these are charged here, they can evade mounted. So once imagine these are now not on the table because you've, you've changed the models over. If these got charged, they could then mount up and then evade mounted. So you've got that extra movement and extra flexibility if they get charged as well. So really flexible, really good tactical unit to have. Again, there wasn't a huge amount in the American Civil War Army, so you're not going to have half your army as being cavalry. But certainly it's always nice to have a little bit of cavalry on the table just to give you that little bit of tactical flexibility. 
but also they look quite nice. In terms of formations, there's not a huge amount of variety. Um, it's basically suggested in the, in the rule book that they, they didn't really have the hitting power of some of this Napoleonic cavalry. So you tend to just find them. I just put them in this kind of formation of just, it's effectively like a, a mini assault column, but you don't get any of the benefits for that. Um, you could put them into line as well, but again, it doesn't really have any difference on their stats. So I just tend to do that from a point of view of um, just keeping it tight on the table, makes it a little bit more uh, easy to move around. Okay, so that's cavalry, really useful unit to have. Um, let me just talk a little bit about their um, combat though, I'll come back for that. So in terms of combat, I've, I will do a video on combat itself, but for the, for, the, for the purpose of this video, cavalry, one of the main rules for these is they cannot, they cannot charge in or make contact with a uh, formed infantry unit or artillery unit to their front. Um, so you can't even order them to do that. Um, unless they're either shaken or disordered. So, for example, if that was a shaken artillery unit and a disordered infantry unit, then they could then potentially charge in and make contact. But if these are formed and they're okay, then you can't do it. And that makes it's interesting. Um, I think just again, just demonstrate the fact they didn't, they weren't the hussars, they weren't the lancers charging into a line. They were more that skirmishing mounted infantry. So obviously, if you were flanking, if you're down here, then yes, you could. You could at that point because you're flanking, so that's fine. Um, but that frontal position you can't do. So again, you have to think about where you put your cavalry, how they can potentially tactically support um, what your infantry are doing. Um, and I tend to find that after some movement, I tend to have them dismounted and they're acting more like a support to the, to the infantry in terms of shooting and having that firepower. Um, it's also worth noting as well that in hand-to-hand -hand cavalry, they, a, they don't provide support and they can't receive support either. And that's a really interesting one. So if you, I'll just put these into contact here. So say for example, these were fighting there, they got into contact there, and these were in support range. Doesn't matter, they won't provide any support to that, that combat there. And again, if these were in combat here, they couldn't receive support either. So the rules really do try and push you down that route of they're not um, cavalry in the sense that you would, again, associate with say Napoleonics, more of a mounted infantry force, um, good for skirmishing, good for being ahead of your battle line, um, good for drawing off uh, uh, enemy cavalry, because you can still fight cavalry on cavalry. This formed infantry and artillery that you can't charge, but you could have a bit of a cavalry bash, uh, battle if you wanted. Um, and again, they've got that tax of flexibility to move around the board quicker and uh, dismount and harass the enemy that way. Okay, so that's cavalry, very useful. I do like having a bit of cavalry in my armies, always makes a bit of a uh, bit of flavour, but you do have to potentially uh, paint up the two different uh, units, which, you know, if you, that does create a little bit of extra painting, but um, yeah, nice once it's done. Okay, so let me, um, I'll, do, I'll just talk a little bit about skirmishes now. Okay, so let's talk about skirmishes. So I talked about the fact that you can have um, your dismounted cavalry as skirmishes, but you can also have your standard infantry regiment as a uh, into skirmish order. Um, the way the supplement talks about this um, is in a couple of ways. Um, I'll start off with the brigades. This is just a mini brigade. Um, we've got a couple of standard infantry regiments, and it does say you can have one infantry designated as light infantry in a brigade. And I do like doing that. I've got a couple. Of, I've got two or three of these regiments now, um, and it is quite nice to have one regiment that's deployed in skirmish order. It does give you, there are some fours and against, but I think the pluses outweigh the minuses. Um, you still get the same firepower as these. So you're still getting three shooting dice, similar to the dismounted cavalry. Um, they're, they're harder to hit, so you get, they're not a clear target, so minus one to hit. Um, they're a bit more um, susceptible to cavalry charges though, because um, if you remember from what I just said before, you can't charge formed infantry, but you could charge at these. And again, these can't, these, again, they can evade, but unlike dismounted cavalry, they haven't got any horses, so they're going to be invading on foot, so they're a little bit easier to catch um, if you wanted to. But it is quite handy, I think, to have one um, in your army. Plus, being light infantry, you can, I give them um, the sharpshooter rule, which means you can get to re-roll one missed shot. Um, now, you, can, you don't have to give them that, but I like to give the light infantry that, uh, that, that uh, additional rule. And again, just gives you a bit more accuracy in your shooting. You can imagine them being out front in a skirmish line, a big long skirmish line, um, shooting at uh, the enemy, harassing the fire. So that's how you could have them. Or it does talk about you can do a mixed order, which is in the main rule book again. So all you would need is just one of these stands, and you literally would put that in front of that unit there. Um, these could have it as well. 
so you can have a skirmish screen in front of your which basically these guys have sent out some guys to uh, skirmish in front and that becomes a mixed order um, formation and there's there's rules in I won't go over the rules in what's in the main rule book but you can, you can use that formation as you move around the battlefield so you could either use your stands as, as a complete infantry regiment if you wanted to or you could make these up and then just have them as potential of mixed order uh, formations in your army as well depends what you how you want to play okay so that's skirmishes okay so that's the end of part two and back for part three very very soon